Mansung.com. It's a pretty simple web page, a dark and barren site with a couple of tabs to choose from on the left hand side. The site houses 20 different artists, which when clicking on the catalog page, takes us to a collection of their albums, EPs, and individual tracks. This site is almost completely in Korean, but it's still pretty easy to navigate without understanding the language. And I also apologize in advance for my more than likely horrible pronunciation of names in this video. It is on this site that you can find the creative collective known as Buell.org and one of its members, Joal. Joal's older brother, Taesang Cho, is the founder of Buell.org, which since 2000 has been a band as well as a design studio, a home for fashion designers, poets, and much, much more. The production history of their first album dates all the way back to 2005, despite the album eventually dropping years later in March of 2012. Buell.org's experimental ambient project, Secret Stories Heard from a Girl in an Opium Den. This is one of three albums I want to discuss today. I've been on this South Korean experimental dream pop kick. I think that's the best way to describe the sound of these projects. And I haven't felt something this refreshing from one single corner of music in honestly quite a while. Whether it's bombastic lo-fi shoegaze, polite droopy or quirky instrumental work, or something unbelievably rich and warm, each album I want to dive into today is really different from the other. And they all somehow deliver the same, like, similar adventurous or wanderlust energy that I haven't been able to find in a lot of other projects for a while. This stuff hit me pretty hard and I feel like I've unlocked a hidden area of music I just had no idea existed. And well, I wanna talk about it. A big shout out to musician and good friend, Nature's Neighbor for joining me in this video, as well as introducing me to the music of Joal and Buell.org in the first place. Probably my favorite thing about running this channel is having people recommend me music. I've been so blessed to learn about so many projects that I probably would have no idea existed without things like the comment section. So always feel free to leave me recommendations down there. I love getting lost in what y'all have to say. So with all that being said, let's get lost in the world of South Korea's dreamy, underground, experimental, noisy, shoegazy pop scene and the expansiveness that lays waiting for us on the other side. Before we jump into everything, if this is your first time here at the channel and you love exploring fascinating music, make sure you throw a like on the video, hit that subscribe button and turn all notifications on so you never miss a future upload. It also helps the channel out a whole bunch. Also, if you wanna see today's video in written form, you can check it out along with all of the other articles I have over at Vapor95's Darknet blog. You can also use code PAD15 to get 15% off their awesome shop at checkout, and the link that automatically applies the discount is ready for you in the description of this video down below. Cheers, and let's begin. Buell.org is a creative collective to the highest degree. They currently sit at six members in total, with guitarist and vocalist Huang Su Yoon, once again, I'm so sorry for butchering these names, joining the collective in 2018. The album I began to mention before, Secret Stories Heard from a Girl in an Opium Den, consists of 15 tracks when adding in the LP and CD exclusive tracks as well, and was initially constructed with the goal of creating an LP for both Europe and the US through Burnt Toast Vinyl, a record label in Philadelphia. Secret Stories Heard from a Girl in an Opium Den is Buell.org's first official album internationally and domestically. It introduced us to the minds of the collective through quirky and playful new age songs like its opening track simply titled Two. I find a real beauty in listening to music where I can't understand the language that is being sung. And because of that, Buell.org's vocals become a true instrument in itself with no direct context or anything like that for me. I'm really only judging it or soaking it in through the literal sound of the voice itself. And something like that always helps me focus on everything else that's going on around the vocal since I really have no meaning or message to go off of in what's being said, and I can only base what I think is going on through the emotion present in the singer's voice. The vocal hook sitting on top of all these other glimmering sounds just makes everything so bright and colorful. I love tracks like Blue Bulb Light, that warm guitar seemingly soaked in like whiskey, if that makes any sense. It's like you're sitting with a bunch of friends in an abandoned barn, passing a bottle around on a beautiful spring day, watching that one friend pull out the acoustic guitar and play some songs, except they're actually pretty good for once. It's a scene straight out of a movie, and maybe we've never had that abandoned farm with friends experience specifically, 
but it's the moody emotional bliss distilled through the vocals again that just causes the sounds to make you miss those good friends you haven't seen in a while. Universe Factory brings these sounds together on top of some light, fuzzy waves of distortion. This is an example of more of the traditional ambient parts of the project, subdued and reflective stretch sounds that make everything feel like a 20 minute track, despite it being over in just about five minutes. This track specifically would have been perfect as a video game startup menu in the 2000s. The story of secret stories heard from a girl in an opium den is documented beautifully over at Burnt Toast Vinyl. It's a really cool little write up over there and you can also discover the rich history of the Philadelphia based platform as well. I'll be sure to put a link to Burnt Toast Vinyl as well as Buell.org in the description below for those wanting to learn and discover more. Buell.org began as a loose group of friends who occasionally had drinking sessions together. They were young and foolish back then, which made them brave. Out of nowhere, they started drawing sketches for a magazine in which they put in rough records of our friends. In turn, the magazine helped them find even more friends. Secret Stories Heard from a Girl in an Opium Den is a collection of stories and sounds from such activities, and Buell.org are still making things together with old and new friends as foolish drinking buddies. Jawal, one of the members of Buell.org, and their solo project right here, that translates to listen to the whole song that celebrates nothing is the music I want to talk about next. This thing is just so crushingly grand and shiny and rustic and is Joao's most recent release. It's Joao's first compilation album that consists of six tracks from previous releases alongside one completely new track. This track right here, which translates to suddenly, is slow, simple, yet full of life. Delicate vocals, sluggish drums, sunny guitars, and even some whistling all come together to create that perfect morning cup of coffee for your ears. There's this little piano interlude that plays alongside the track as well that comes more and more to life as the track plays out. And once again, not understanding the language just delivers everything said as nothing more than beautiful sounds. Sometimes not everything needs to be super meaningful. <laughs> track four, The Future Was Beautiful, changes up the mix down and brings a much more cruddy, distorted feel to these instruments all jamming out with one another. Track six, which translates to bad relationship, returns back to that somber, looking upon the horizon imagery through nostalgic and comforting instrumentals all coming together for your ears to lay upon, only to eventually explode out into instances of the more distorted sections of the album. Listen to the whole song that celebrates nothing, plays with two different sound styles in their own territories, rich and rustic to harsh and distorted, and for some songs, clashes them both together at the perfect moments, and I love every second of it. What's up everyone, Mike from Nature's Neighbor here. I originally got into his music back in 2014 when I was super into My Bloody Valentine and especially the album Loveless. For those of you that don't know, Loveless has two different cover versions of the entire album one made in Japan, and the other made in South Korea. The Japanese version is called Yellow Loveless and features artists like Boris and Shonen Knife. However, I was much more taken by the South Korean version called Blue Loveless. While the Japanese artists on Yellow Loveless tried to recreate the songs that were kind of more in line with the original recordings, the South Korean artists featured on Blue Loveless seemed much more dedicated to creating complete reinventions of the tracks. In my opinion, the standout track on that album is the cover of When You Sleep by the artist Joao. His version was so fresh and so breathtakingly beautiful that I was compelled to search out more of his music. The album art looks like that picture that made its rounds on the internet a little while back, the one where it was like a bunch of things, but you couldn't tell if there was one actual distinct thing that you can name or something. And this album reminds me of that. It just translates perfectly into the muddy, yet wonderfully composed nature of the compilation album as a whole. As Joel played in Buell.org, he also played in another band called Underwear's Band from about 2001, a post-rock shoegaze band. He played in both bands for a while and in 2009, released his first solo album, Things You Are Going To See Here, while he was living in New York. Things You Are Going To See Here is a rather dark and moody album from Joel while Clean and Clear from 2013 was intended to be relatively brighter and more musically diverse. It was then that I discovered his 2013 sophomore album Clean and Clear, an incredibly concise piece of work that's comprised of nine tracks. This album struck me for two reasons. The first is a total otherworldly production that sends me off into a different universe somewhere. It reminded me of a weird mashup of Pavement and Animal Collective, but while the production sent me flying high into the stratosphere, the thing that grounded the album and made it really human and relatable to me was the really raw and stripped back vocal performances throughout the album. To get the best of both worlds with Joao's creative touch, 
I really believe nothing beats this thing right here. The compilation album is just seven tracks of a full display, a wide range of sharp, almost ancient acoustic work alongside silky, delicate vocals that seem as if they're hanging from a thread at all times. Joao walks this delicate tightrope alongside more traditional hazy and distorted shoegazy production at times as well. The project is all over the place and I really hope this video can just introduce the magic of Joao's work to many other artists and listeners out there as well. This project specifically has got a little bit of everything and I know you're gonna love it. Joao's singing style, along with the singing style of his older brother from the, and pardon my awful pronunciation, Buell.org completely draw me in. This approach to vocal recordings is something that I can really relate to. I've always insisted on and taken a lot of pride in the fact that I let my vocal takes be very raw and human, without any digital enhancements of any kind. I even refuse to use digital reverb, letting the room sound dictate how the vocal track sounds. And this is clearly a production style that Jawal adheres to as well. Although the other production sounds send you flying off into space, the vocal track ties you down and reminds you that it's a human being singing these songs. The mixture of that approach to tracking vocals, the crazy production style, and the very delicate guitar playing really makes this music super special to me. Its albums like Clean and Clear, along with the 2009 debut album Things You Are Going to See Here, and also Buell.org's monthly Vampire Issue 5 that stick with me through the years and I always come back to every now and then, and when I do, those songs are constantly on repeat. I feel like these two artists really laid the groundwork for the South Korean underground music scene. And although other artists such as Paranoil or maybe Mid-Air Thief have gotten a lot more accolades and exposure over the past five years, I really do feel like the artist Jawal and the predecessors Buell.org deserve just as much, if not more, respect. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know that I have only about 50 cassettes left of Desert Sand Feels Warm at Night's incredible slush wave album, Drifting in the Sea of Clouds, over at my record label, Catskill Records. If you wanna pick one of these up, head on over to catskillrecords.bandcamp.com before they're gone. And even if you don't wanna pick one up, no problem, definitely follow the label page at least, head on over there. I got some great stuff coming down the line, and if you follow, you'll get notified when anything drops or any big news comes out. So yeah, thank you all so much for the support on the label, and I can't wait to share with you what's next. This next album, many of you may have actually heard already, as it really gained some real popularity and traction throughout the internet after its release in February of 2021. To See the Next Part of the Dream by Paranol is a 10-track noise rock shoegaze album from Seoul, created by someone we pretty much know nothing about. And it's because of this fact, along with the saturated fuzzy textures of the sound design overall, that the album plays as if it's coming from behind a bedroom door. A creative mind on the other side pouring out their incredible talent and secluded thoughts through the gateway of a band camp upload. It really does sound like someone routing their guitar directly into their computer to avoid waking up their parents, Ian Cohen writes at Pitchfork, which I think nails it perfectly. I spent a lot of time listening to this thing in the summer and fall of 2021. It's the perfect blend of harshness yet tranquility for any season of the year. It's never boring. It's never too like overly fuzzy as I have found for myself personally with many other shoegaze albums I'm recommended. Everything on the album combines into one singular lo-fi plane of a sound and its mix feels like every instrument and vocal layer are present on the same battlefield. It's washy and it's muddy. Yet there is no instrument or little sound effect that somehow suffocates the other. Each stem curls up into like a little ball and just tries to hide from the rest of the sound created by Paranol, this sea that just crashes together constantly and creates the perfect, harsh, noisy, shoegazy trip. At least for me, it just works so well. Each track on here parades into the other one through pompous guitar work, these raw and barren vocals, and it's pretty much the same lo-fi texture throughout the entire thing. A project like this though, and how it's presented by the creator through their band camp page for it, it really works in this production style though, and you'll find yourself glued to the homemade novelty Paranol engraves into the album. I love every track on here, plain and simple, but the standout on To See The Next Part Of The Dream is definitely the track White Ceiling a 10 minute adventure that gradually wakes from its slumber as the track builds onto itself minute after minute. And once you're six or seven minutes in, the track becomes this 
overload of instruments and screams and like alarm clocks. It's just this crazy blend that showcases everything Paranormal can do as a musician. The idea of being at a crossroads with yourself and all the clutter in the world around us, trying to somehow find joy in the constant cynicism we tend to fall into daily. It's this album is just like modern day living. I don't know. It's just really, really damn good. <laughs> to see the next part of the dream was released through a variety of physicals from cassette to CD, all long sold out. And I'm always hoping for a vinyl pressing of this thing. But if you love moody vocals with extremely fun instrumentals, all soaked in a lo-fi buzz, to see the next part of the dream will be candy for your ears. There is so much great stuff coming out of Korea and these artists are just a handful of what's available. I highly, highly recommend just searching on Bandcamp for more. I've had a blast just not understanding the language yet finding these intoxicating experiences through a variety of projects that blend all these different genres and sounds together to be so much fun. It's been so genuinely refreshing and was much needed for me with music and I cannot wait to find more. Overall, the underground Korean music scene has yielded some of the greatest albums of the past 10 years, and I really believe that they have carried the torch of underground indie music when it sort of fell off the radar in the late 2010s in America. If you're into Mid-Air Thief or Paranoil, you absolutely need to do yourself a favor and go back and check out these artists, Joal and Buell.org, because they are absolute staples of the South Korean underground music scene. And as for me, I know that these artists' albums will stick with me for the rest of my life. Please feel free to let me know of any other artists or albums I should check out in the comments down below. Like I said earlier, I love going through what y'all have to say, and I'm so thankful for all of your recommendations. So many eventually end up in videos, and I've discovered so much great music because of you, so thank you very much. Check out my video on Japan's most dangerous band, or this video here on the mysterious genre of Signal Wave, and I'll see you over there. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and until next time, much love, your boy, Pad Chennington.